Everybody ready? Three, two, one. Go. Welcome back. After watching some flat earth videos and conspiracy theories, this stuff started getting into my head. So this time I'm going to legitimately challenge Newton's third law to demonstrate, is it a law or a lie? So I set out to build a bigger, better vacuum chamber that's going to give us undeniable results. I'm genuinely curious as to how Newton's third law is going to behave in the environment of a vacuum, where in this case, the rocket won't have an atmosphere to push against. All right, we got our vacuum chamber completed. The only thing I have left to do is get the top seal on, get the top cover in place and test it. In order for this experiment to give us reliable results, I contacted the AIAA team at UIC. Turns out they have some solid rocket propellant on hand, ready to go. So I headed down to their lab, which was a very interesting place, by the way. They gave me not only the solid rocket propellant. Is this the actual propellant? Yep. Thought it would be heavier than this. Feels kind of light. This is our solid rocket right here. But everything else that I need to build a miniature version of a solid rocket booster similar to what NASA uses. I believe this is going to give us more concrete results not based off of black powder rockets that, well, nobody burns in space in the first place. Now that I have the vacuum chamber built, this vacuum chamber is going to allow me to pull a complete vacuum. But before moving on to the experiment, I wanna do some initial testing to make sure that this vacuum chamber is safe to use and that it holds a vacuum, make sure we don't have any leaks or anything like that. So uh, yeah, let's test it out. Perfect. First and foremost, since these motors produce a lot more thrust than the black powder motors I used in the previous episodes, I had to come up with a better way to mount them in the vacuum chamber. This is what I came up with. Okay. This is like against all possible rules. The team even named it the Four-Legged Spider. Hold on, that's a different movie. Second and most important, we need to measure thrust. This is gonna be our thrust scale. I think for this, I'm going to go low tech, old school. And I have a feeling that the team was quite impressed oh, is that what we're using? with my practical approach to this problem. That's pretty good, that'll work. Now that I have all that figured out, it's time to assemble our rocket motor properly, mount it in the vacuum chamber with the scale to measure the thrust, and run our chamber through the first partial vacuum test. Hang on, it's vacuuming down. I'll give it one more second and then hit it. Hit it, hit it! So we know rockets burn. I'm going to install a new rocket motor in the casing. This is our nozzle, our nozzle retainer. Reset the experiment and only one question remains. Sir Isaac Newton, does your law still apply over 330 years later in a vacuum? Well, I hope you're watching because we're about to find out. All right, we got our blast shield in place for safety. Our vacuum chamber is in a vacuum. Our rocket is set, wired up, ready to go. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. The only thing I have left to do is take these two wires, touch them to the terminals on this battery, and hopefully it doesn't go boom. Hopefully it just goes Everybody ready? Here it goes. What? A hang fire. No! Not a hang fire. No freaking way. You gotta be kidding me. So apparently I have some findings from this first phase of the experiment. And that is, I just realized that the vacuum has now created an environment where it becomes more difficult to ignite the solid rocket booster. 
This means that there is some truth to what the conspiracy theorists think. It's more difficult to ignite a solid rocket booster in a vacuum because we tried this and atmospheric pressure ignited just fine. And uh, I mean, that's definitely, you know, that's definitely an interesting finding. I have just one more problem. Due to the rapid depressurization of the chamber after that last attempt, one of the seams was compromised. I need to re-weld that seam and put a couple of supports in where the deflection occurred. That demonstration just gives you an example of how much force pulling a vacuum in a chamber like this has. So it's essentially at sea level 14.7 PSI, which is 14.7 pounds for every square inch pushing in on each side of this chamber. So if you do the math, which I already did, it's about 80,000 pounds combined. So you got 20,000 pounds on each one of these walls trying to cave this thing in. Since that last attempt was a failure, I invited the AIAA team over for the rest of the experiment because I know how much they love hang fires and they have a lot more experience with this propellant than I do in case I run into more issues along the way. So pretty much all that smoke that came out was the igniter, yep. nothing else. And I think they're in for a big surprise because I don't think it's gonna be that easy to ignite in a full vacuum, but we'll see. All right, I will hit it now, we're good. Three, two, one. Oh! Oh! There you go. That is the problem that we're having all along. What do you think, Mike? We can repack an igniter and try it again. Looks like we may need some atmospheric pressure in the actual booster to get it to ignite. Once it's ignited, I think it's gonna do okay. What do you think, Mike? Uh, we'll try it again. Uh, it could be from the lack of air, from the type of igniter, from the cap being on it. Uh, hard to say. So you think once it's lit in a vacuum, it's gonna stay lit? It should, yeah. It's got its own oxidizer. Let's see what, what it looks like. All that smoke. And it looks like, I mean, the igniter kind of ignited, right? Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah, look at that. Kind of ignited, but I don't know. It doesn't look like it fully ignited. This is going to be our second attempt. We got another igniter in place. And uh, what do we do differently this time? We changed out a, a completely new motor. This was the old one that we, that we just test fired. Yeah, I don't think the motor's a problem, though. I think it's the vacuum. We'll try. We'll see what happens. Um, that's a brand new motor, brand new igniters. We doubled them up this time. All right, let's Feeling do it. good. Let's do it. All right. Three, two, one, go. Go, go. Oh, no, it failed. strange so this is our third attempt here and it was a failure as you saw in the footage um so my recommendation is these guys didn't think this is going to be a problem i did however i called it i said this thing may give us issues to light so the next thing that i suggest is i think that we should uh i think we should seal it up so i'm going to modify this rocket motor I think once it's ignited, it's gonna create some internal pressure and keep burning. That's really not what I'm challenging here. I'm challenging Newton's law. I wanna see if when it burns in a vacuum, if it creates a reaction that produces thrust. So this is our fourth attempt. And what we did different this time is we made a ruptured disc on the outside of the nozzle. And this is gonna hold atmospheric pressure inside of that rocket motor until ignition occurs. And the idea is this thing's going to pop out and the motor's going to light, ignite, and burn normally. That's the key word, burn normally.
our solid rocket motor burned in a vacuum. As you can see, that was a success. Not only did our solid rocket motor burn in a vacuum, but it also produced thrust during those initial moments of ignition, which is exactly what I was looking for to support Newton's third law. Because any thrust produced under these conditions is produced off of the pure reaction of the fuel burning and not from the thrust pushing against air or an atmosphere. Now, something that I found really interesting was where the main ignition occurred. If you look closely at the high speed footage, you can see the majority of the gas started to ignite in the vacuum chamber, not right behind the rocket motor, as I would expect. I'm not sure why that is, but that looked pretty cool. Regardless of the gauge readings for our vacuum chamber, the vacuum was obviously sufficient because this was our fourth attempt. We had to modify the rocket motor in order to get it to ignite in the vacuum chamber. That being said, um, I'm just gonna do one more experiment. I'm gonna get a really small model rocket motor, one tenth the size of this solid rocket booster, and put it in the same chamber. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna essentially increase the amount of volume of our chamber by 10, since the motor is one tenth the size of this motor. That burns a little bit slower than the solid rocket booster here. We're gonna be able to see whether or not it's creating thrust in a vacuum and that's going to further validate Newton's third law. All right, here it goes. Okay, so that was another successful burn. The model rocket motor burned just fine in the vacuum chamber. Unfortunately, it didn't go exactly as planned because the sled got wedged in between the walls of the chamber when I pulled a deeper vacuum. But if you look closely at the motor, when it first ignited, it produced some thrust and it pushed itself into the casing where it was being held. That to me further supports Newton's third law Apparently it applies in a vacuum as well as atmospheric pressure. Yeah, I think that was enough proof for me. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Feel free to share, subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comments below. This was a tough one. This was a long shoot. I had a lot of issues here and uh, so many issues that Discovery's gone. They left yesterday. They ran out of time. My crew's gone. I finished the entire episode all by myself. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Check out our other videos here. Check us out on Discovery. Hasta luego. Hasta mais. Ciao, ciao.